So in this video, I'm going to show you a few short tricks to getting started recording music into Sibelius. And specifically, what I'm going to look at is how to record music without typing anything in, but rather playing music in and using the least amount of steps to make everything happen. So first of all, I'm going to select a common template here from this quick start. I'm going to select voice and keyboard, double click on it. And I'm going to zoom in a bit to make it easier to see. I can also go um, Command Plus to make it larger, Control Plus to make it larger. The first thing I want to do when I'm recording music into Sibelius is to go to Note Input and then Flexi Time and this little button here, Flexi Time Options. And these are the options that tell me how Sibelius is going to interpret what I play when it notates it for me. These are really important because if you have them set wrong, it'll try to notate all kinds of small details that were probably just mistakes you made. What we want it to do is to interpret the basic way we played and not the exact, exact amount of time we gave to each note. So the first thing we look at is flex time. It says flexibility of tempo. And it gives you some options here where you can choose how flexible Sibelius is when it records the speed that you play music. So if you fluctuate a lot, it you should put it on high and then it's going to expect that you're fluctuating in your tempo and it's going to try to follow you. If you go slower, it'll try to decrease the tempo it records you at. In theory, that makes a lot of sense, but in practice, it doesn't seem to work too well for me. So I go to here, none, or non rubato. So there are just a few more settings we need to make so that Sibelius can record us more accurately in the same way that we played it. And the first thing we need to do is to give a bit of time for Sibelius to just click off counts and give us the time to be adjusted to how fast it's playing. Finally, we're going to need to actually move ourselves physically over to where our instrument is, where our keyboard is, and get our hands situated so we can start playing. So if it says introduction one bars, that means it's going to click like this. One, two, three, four. And right after that, it's going to start recording. There may not be enough time for us to jump over to where our keyboard is, get our hands ready to start playing. So I usually record with two bars as an introduction. Next thing, voices. Sometimes when you're playing very complicated music, you could be playing two melodies at the same time with one hand. Maybe one note is moving fast, while another note is held down for a long time and harmonizing with that. That's complicated. That's what it means here as voices. That means that multiple things are going on at the same time. Sibelius is not going to do a great job trying to record that. And we may not do a great job trying to play those. So it's probably a good idea to remove this checkbox and just have it record whatever we play into what's called one voice or one main idea. Next up is notation. When we're listening to music, we usually tap our foot to something called the beat or the tempo. That's the main pulse that we feel when we hear music. But sometimes things are happening faster than that main pulse or slower than that main pulse. Here where it says note value, it lets us describe the fastest or slowest thing that we're going to play. And that's very important because oftentimes when we try to record something with a computer, it records much more accurately than we actually intend. If we make something a slight bit longer or shorter, it's going to record some super small difference in the note value. So we want to actually have the smallest or longest minimum duration that's possible. It defaults here to this thing here with, with two little parts coming off a golf club looking thing, which is called a 16th note, meaning that there are 16 of these found in a whole 
segment of music, a whole measure. Or, according to the main pulse, there's four of them in every main pulse. That's a bit fast, so I'm going to select this one called eighth note. Eighth note is probably a good general idea for what to select. Great, so I have my most accurate rhythm going to be this thing called an eighth note. Then I'm going to go over here to where it says tuplets. Sometimes when I play a main beat, I divide it up and do two parts. Instead of going one, two, three, four, I go one and two and three and four and. Or if I divide it into four parts, I go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Those are the most typical ways to divide up a musical pulse or a musical beat. There are also other ways of dividing up into different parts. And that's what this thing is all about, tuplets. Tuplets means dividing up the beat into things that aren't divisions of two. Non-standard uh, dividing up of the beat. So the, unless you're doing really complicated stuff, get rid of these all. Put them all to none. Now I'm going to go over to transport. And transport is just a little window here that gives me some tools to go back and forth in my piece, to start the piece, to stop it, to go to the beginning and to end. If I have this metronome picture in blue, that means it's on, so it'll click while it's playing. If I hit play, I can hear a, a beat counting off, a pulse counting off. That just helps me stay in time. So I'm going to get it at a speed that makes sense for me. Now I'm going to go ahead and select where I want to start playing. And I'm going to go to no input and hit record and then just go ahead and play. Okay, so I've made a recording. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning. And things look pretty good. I have my notes there. Can I de click this metronome and push play? So everything's pretty good. It doesn't look exactly perfect though. There's some things that maybe I wanted to be just a little bit slower. And it notated too accurately. It notated some of my mistakes here. I had it with the least amount of accuracy being a 16th note. And you see here, these should have been 8th notes each. So there's actually a pretty good way of solving a lot of these basic interpretational uh, mistakes. And if you just triple click there's double click and I'm going to triple click on a measure it'll select an entire musical line then I'm going to hold down shift click the next one essentially I've just selected the whole piano part of the whole piece and then if I just go to renotate performance And with all default settings, just hit OK. It's going to analyze what I've done and make guesses about what I intended to do. Oftentimes, it makes it look a lot better. This is definitely the case here. Now, what I intended to play is a lot more close in the notation. So many times, it's the only thing you have to do. This looks pretty good. So I have a couple of mistakes and there's some things that are notated that are wrong because over here, for instance, is a little bit faster, did a trill and something. I can go ahead and change those, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. So I just record it and after I'm done, I hit this renotate performance and it's going to make it a lot more characteristic of what I intended.